Welcome back to Sin Lab Podcast. I remain your host, Uche Namadi. We are still addressing the crisis of antibiotic abuse. We previously talked about antibiotics and their implications on health. In this episode, we'll be talking about the implications of antibiotic resistance. I am still with Dr. Folabi Obe, the Chief Medical Officer of Sin Lab Nigeria. Please do not forget to like, subscribe, share, and follow Sin Lab Nigeria on YouTube and on Spotify. Now, over to you, Dr. Obe. Now, we discussed a lot in the previous episode, yeah, so I wanted us to go deeper and right. talk about the implications of this antibiotic resistance because you mentioned it in the previous um, episode that the more you abuse, the higher chances of the bacteria to gather, in your words. <laughs> yeah. So how does antibiotic abuse aggravate the emergence and spread of this antibiotic-resistant bacteria? Well, um, yeah, this is how it happens. Right. Bacteria on their own, they have tendencies of having, of developing resistance. Okay. They are also smart in their own way. Smart. Yes. Bacteria are, in fact, they are as smart as Nigerians. <laughs> that, that, that's what I would say. So, okay. and of course, the more you try to outsmart a Nigerian anywhere <sighs> he or she is, yes. the more the person brings out the Nigerian in him. Okay. The same way with bacteria. Huh. So the more we load them with the things that should kill them or destroy them when they are causing trouble in us, the more they grow smarter. And there is another very funny thing about them. Okay. You know, these bacteria are plenty. Yes. Echerichia e. coli, Pseudomonas, Klebsiella. Permit me to mention just a few. Sure. Now, if I have infection with Klebsiella, for example, okay. and I've abused antibiotics, and the Klebsiella develop resistance, if you come around me, right, even as we are talking now, and of course, when I talk, some of my speech, even though micro, micro, you won't see. Yes. They are falling on the mic. Yes. You know, they could also fall on your mic. Sure. You probably would touch the book or the mic. Mm -hmm. You have also picked my Klebsiella. Okay. Right. And yes. because it is resistant to me, you get home, you touch your husband, you touch your wife. So you just see that all of us were distributing that strain that is terrible. We are all a potential carrier. We are all potential carrier. And you see, the world itself is like a global village. Of course. Right? Yes. Someone can leave Nigeria today with resistant strain of, for example, a Sherry Shai Kola. Mm -hmm. It gets to Australia in the next 48 hours it starts to share that strain <laughs> share. with them. Yes. And it's usually a problem. Yes. So it's a very major... In fact, let me share mm. one beautiful experience with you. Some three years ago, okay. I went for a conference. Okay. Right. Some isolates of organisms were picked from Nigeria and they were resistant to a particular antibiotics. Wow. Right. They go to UK, right? And they texted bacteria in the UK okay. against that same antibiotics and would discover that it's also resistant. The wow. question is, how did the bacteria move from here and get there? Hmm. So all these factors generally abuse up and down here and there. They aggravate antimicrobial resistance. Oh. And antimicrobial resistance, as we speak, is a global pandemic. I agree. Let me say that it's a global pandemic. The what struck me is when you said they get smarter. Yes, they actually. So get you smarter. you you do one to them. They in bring fact, defense. They bring defense, <laughs> and their defense usually wow. stays longer. Wow. And their defense don't remain at that spot. Wow. They build defense in me, but then I give the defense to you. You give the defense to everybody around, and because they are microorganisms, we you don't can't see even them. See. But then we are spreading them up and down. Yes. Yes. Even this analogy you just made now, the the one in the UK and the one in Nigeria, that's actually strange. <laughs> wow. So moving further, please, how does antibiotic overuse contribute to the crisis of the antibiotic resistance? Well, I think it's just the same. It's just the same Principle, phenomenon. Oh, yeah. Right. <clears throat> if you are supposed, permit me, if you are supposed to use it for five days. Okay. Now, the intention is to kill one particular 
bacteria. Yes. That is causing infection. And yes. you say you have urinary tract infection. Yes. They give you one antibiotics. It is meant to kill that bacteria that is causing that infection. Yes. It is meant to be used for maybe five days. Yes. If you decide to use it for longer than five days, it may kill that one. Let's say it's effective. It will kill that one. Okay. Now, the bacteria in the body, they would also begin to sense that, oh, they can use this thing to also to kill also. me. You. <laughs> so let me begin to create my defense yes. against this one. Perhaps the next time they are sending it to kill me, I'll just show my bullet. No, you cannot kill me again. Oh. Right, so that is how, in a very simple way, that is how why the over long use yes, can, can lead to acquire of resistance. Wow, and it becomes a big problem. This is really scary. It is, but we're not taking it serious. <laughs> wow. Okay, so um, let me just ask because this one is affecting me somehow. What are the global implications of antibiotic resistance for healthcare systems and public health? The global implication is enormous. Like I said, the world is a global village. Yes. Whatsoever bacteria you see here that is resistant, you can see it in Canada. Of course. It may also be resistant. Of course. You can see it in Kuwait. It may also be resistant. Now, it now means that the antibiotics that we know would usually work before they are not working again. So it means that the world mortality naturally hmm. will increase. It means that yes, people will die rates, from yes. infection that ordinarily should not kill people. Right. Infection that ordinarily you will treat in the clinic will hmm. lead to admission. Infection that ordinarily a three, four, five days of admission should take care of will lead to two weeks of admission. Hmm. Infections that ordinarily two weeks of admission should take care of, least of the person landing in intensive care units. Wow, I see you. Yes. That bad. It can be that bad. Even in ICU, things that, I mean, it that makes people the will doctor... people go and come out from. They won't come out. It even, even makes the doctor, it's gradually making doctors like people who don't know anything. They because, know what to do. Yes, normally this should, should do, cure this. You get it. Wow. So it's 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 a it's a, it's a, so the in the global space, it means that is making the world to do unnecessary work of looking for newer antibiotics. Yes, when ordinarily something as simple as what we had could have done justice to and the let bacteria. Let me burst your bubble. In the last 10, 15 years, the world has not produced a newer antibiotics. And wow. all the bacteria are already familiar with, with what we have. With what we have. So what we have been doing is to just add a small molecule to the existing one. It means that with the way we're going, we're near a rock. In fact, we are already hitting the rock. Hmm. And that's why you see more people are not getting out from intensive care units because of antibiotic resistance. So it has really local scary. implication at National implication, that's global implication. It's really scary, Dr. B, when you put it like that. <laughs> well, that's what well, it is. Yes. So, um, I'm curious to know, are there examples illustrating the severe outcomes of antibiotic resistance? There are Can plenty of examples. Would you like me to tell you a story? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> now, two stories. Now, when I was leaving medical school, you know, as new doctors then, there is a particular antibiotics. It answers all the questions. In fact, when people are getting confused, they will say, go and use Keftriazone. Mm, and I'm you know familiar. that when you use Keftriazone, <laughs> in fact, when they tell your family to go and use Keftriazone, all of you knows that we need to start to pray because maybe oh. something is likely going to happen. But the person oh. recovers. Okay. But by the time I started my postgraduate training, I realized that Keftriazone is not answering the question again. Why? Mm. The bacteria has acquired resistance. I can speak to you, a lot of unpublished data in Lagos, and of course, if you mm. see it in Lagos, we're going to see it across major cities in the, in the country. It has been reported about 65 to 75% resistance to keftriazone, meaning that six to seven out of every 10 people you use keftriazone for, it will not work. Mm. Now we move to make the carbapenems. The meropenems, the mepenems. My sister, a vial of this drug, wow. right, it's about eleven to 15,000 naira. And you're going to be using them three per day. 
That means average of 40,000 naira for one antibiotic that you are not even sure is going to work. work, right? Even that one now is beginning to have resistance. And we have moved to the final and the last bus stop of antibiotics. Right. Now, what is my story? I used to review a patient in one intensive care unit in Lagos. And um, the man had infection, a grew pseudomonas. Pardon, is also one of the names of the organism. Is resistant to all antibiotics. Wow. Except for one. And the only one that is uh, sensitive to, that one will hit the kidney bad. And this woman or this man already has a chronic kidney problem. Oh. So it means that if you must save this man, you will finally destroy the kidneys. The kidneys. If you must preserve the kidney, this man will die. So what do you do? So we need to call a meeting. Okay, doctors that attend to the kidney, doctors that attend to sepsis, doctors that attend to the heart. So we had a meeting. And then while we're having the conversation, we know that if I'm the one doing my work, then the kidney will fail. Hmm. If you are the one trying to preserve the kidney, then the sepsis infection will kill this person. And these are things you see. Doctors hmm. don't talk about it, but then this is the reality. It's doctors share part of the problem. All of us share part of the problem. So there are, and of course, again, I, I tell people, eh, when you do statistics and you see, eh, we saw 500 patients in this hospital eh, in the last one month and we lost only 10 and that is 0.5%. I don't hmm. know if my statistics is correct. And I will tell people that's 0.5%. Oh. That one man, may be the breadwinner of one family. Yes. So it is 100% to that family. It may be 0.00% to the hospital. Yes. But to the family, it is 100%. So it's wow. a major problem. Wow. Dr. Obey, I must say that this has been very informative. To my audience, can you see what the implications of antibiotic resistance can do? Please, having heard this, do you still want to indulge in going to the counter to pick antibiotics that has not been prescribed for? I guess not. Please, let's stay informed and stay safe. Do not forget to like, subscribe, share and follow Synlab Nigeria on YouTube and on Spotify. Don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs>